Hey what's up guys so finally Galaxy Note 10 has started receiving Android 11 One UI 3.0 update and in this video we will check out what's new in One UI 3 and are there any changes in performance after the Android 11 update The size of the official update is 2.1 GB so make sure you are connected to a strong and fast Wi-Fi First of all you can see the new icons on the settings page they look much more colorful now giving a fresh look and the Samsung account is shown at the top center and it's much bigger now There's no difference in the stock app icons. They still have the rounded edge circular look, but the app drawer looks cleaner due to more transparency and slightly small icons. The user interface feels much more smoother. The animations feels much more refined. There's no frame drop or jitteriness even while swiping or opening any apps rapidly. The notification and quick setting panel has been revised as well to give a much fresher look. It has a transparent look which looks much better than the opaque white background of Android 11. The icons in the quick settings panel have been revised as well and when you turn on dark mode the quick settings panel has a transparent black look instead of just plain black. Now you have the option to add device and media control shortcut and brightness option for easy access in the quick panel layout. Media and device controls are easier with the improvements in the notification panel. With the device and media shortcut buttons you can see recently used media apps and quickly change the playback device so it's much more convenient now. And with One UI 3, you can have the option to directly access brightness and media and playback devices without swiping down the whole notification panel. For that, you have to just turn it on from quick panel settings as I had shown earlier. And in the notification panel, now the notifications are divided into categories like music playback is at the top, then there are alerting notifications like message and others, and finally at the end there are silent notifications like downloaded files. So it's easier to take a glance at different notifications. You can add image or video background to your call screen to have the picture on the whole display which looks much better. And the UI after receiving the call has been improved as well. The call settings now have a white square background which was not there in Android 10. Now you have double tap to lock option as well which can be turned on from settings in advanced feature options. The icons on the lock screen to have transparent background. The always on display on the lock screen has been revised as well. and by double clicking on the clock and then swiping up and down you can add and access widgets like music calendar weather and others so it's easier to find and control your routines some new image categories have also been added for dynamic wallpapers which can be accessed by swiping left on the lock screen the new circular theme has been applied to lock screen as well and now the password numbers have a circular look the volume bar has been moved to the left with a new look and the volume controls page has been redesigned as well and instead of thin blue lines volume controls now have a tabular design which looks much better now you can directly add widgets of the app on the home screen by long pressing the app and selecting widgets there are multiple design options available to choose from depending on the app earlier when you used to make changes to a photo it used to save as a copy of the original image but now the changes are saved on the original image only and you have the option to revert back so you can revert back to the original image anytime You can still turn on the option to save the edited image as a copy instead of replacing the original image. The UI of the gallery app has been revised as well and now the advanced settings button has been moved to the bottom right corner which was at the top right corner earlier. Sadly the Wi-Fi direct option has been removed from the sharing options and now you can only use nearby share for sharing large files to other devices but you can still receive files using Wi-Fi direct. In the Samsung internet browser you can hide the status and navigation bar for a more immersive experience. The look of the tabs page has been revised as well and now you can change the look of the open tabs as per your liking whether you want a list stack or a grid view You can also rearrange the tabs and lock the tabs so they won't close even if you swipe them by mistake so this can be a really helpful feature but I don't think many people still use Samsung browser over Google Chrome Earlier we had recycle bin only for gallery and my files app but recycle bin has now been added to message and contacts app as well So if you delete a contact or message by mistake you can restore them from the recycle bin and the deleted contacts and messages are stored in the recycle bin for 30 days The next new feature is the notification bubble so if you get a text message you can go to notification panel and expand the message then there's a button to activate the bubble window so when you press it the conversations open in a bubble window and you can reply from here itself Also if you click the back button you have chat heads on your screen much like Facebook Messenger chat heads In order to activate that you can go to settings then notifications and the notifications click advanced settings There you have floating notification options under that you can activate bubbles Next new option is the notification history you can see here all the notifications that you had received during the day 
so you won't miss any important notification which you had discarded by mistake. A new feature has been added in the developer options and in order to activate that you need to have developer settings. For that you can go to settings, software options, under that tap build number 7 times and your developer settings will be activated. And in the developer options you can now turn on this show refresh rate option. Once you activate that, the refresh rate is shown at the top left corner but since the phone doesn't have 120Hz, it will be always on 60Hz so having this feature is of no use. The security has been improved with this update especially in regards to app permissions and for that a new option named permission manager has been added and over here you can see the list of apps installed on your phone and which all permissions you have granted to each app. Also you can deny a particular permission for a certain app. So this is a really good feature as you can deny camera permission to apps like Facebook to avoid privacy issues. The look of the alarm display has been changed and now you can also hear the timing when the alarm rings. With the new improvements in the algorithms of Android 11 and One UI 3, the performance has improved slightly and as you can see Galaxy Note 10 Exynos scored 440k in N22 benchmarks on Android 11 whereas it had scored 438k in my previous test on Android 10. So you can expect marginal improvement in game loading times and gameplay. But the slight heating issue during gaming is still there. There's improvement in the app loading times, it's slightly quicker and the user interface feels much more smoother. And if you are confused whether Galaxy Note 10 is still worth buying then you can watch the video by clicking on the card on the top right corner to make the right choice. There's no difference in the user interface of the camera app, it's exactly the same but Samsung claims that the picture quality has improved slightly. I will test that and comment on that later on. So these were all the major changes in Android 11 One UI 3.0 update. I have used it for 2 days and haven't experienced any major bugs till now. Except for slightly faster battery drain especially while using Bluetooth headphones. I think the performance has improved slightly, the UI feels much more smoother. But the battery backup is slightly affected due to the update like 15-20 minutes or so. If you find any other new feature or new bug, comment below so I can look into it. If you found this video helpful, please like and share the video. Also don't forget to click the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get updates on our new video uploads. Also follow me on Instagram on techbuzz.insta page and techbuzz Facebook page. We will be back with another video soon, till then stay tuned.